What's going on, everyone? For those who don't know, uh, my name is Josh. Um, this is something I've wanted to do for a while, kind of get started with YouTube. I'm a big fan of a lot of people on YouTube. I watch a lot of YouTube videos, everything from religion to uh, conspiracies to health and fitness, everything like that. Uh, to give you guys a background on me, I was born and raised in Pennsylvania. 2012, I joined the Marine Corps where I got stationed in California. I got out in 2016. Now I live in Northern California, um, and uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, I've been big into MMA for a while now. I've literally for like twelve years. I've been working out. I'm pretty on top of my nutrition, and uh, yeah, it all kind of came together. I was like, I talk a lot. Might as well make a YouTube video. See how it goes. So as far as the um, UFC two fifty one in my predictions, that's the video I'll do today. Uh, so the first fight, we have Amanda Ribas and Paige Van Zant, And um, watch them both fight a lot. Uh, Amanda Ribas is extremely good at submissions, transitions, throwing, um, you know, kind of like falling into a transition, into a submission, this thing that she does. Um, where Paige Van Zant is a really good striker, and she's very athletic as far as like hand-eye coordination and kind of like how another fighter on today's card, Jorge Masvidal, he has those kind of quick instincts where he almost reacts before he thinks. Um, and I think that helps a lot of fighters. I think that's going to help Paige a lot. I think Paige is going to win that fight. And I would say probably TKO or KO in round four or five. Then we have Jessica Andrade and uh, Thug Rose. So Thug Rose is coming off a pretty uh, dangerous injury. I suppose she was slammed on her head, uh, you know. And I think a big part of that fight is going to be her mindset going into this fight. This is a rematch. So their original fight was really good. And throughout the fight, Thug Rose was slowly figuring her out. Um, this one's kind of a gamble. I'm going to go with Thug Rose. Uh, and I'm going to go with TKO in round three. And not just TKO. I think it's going to be a head kick TKO in round three. Uh, so then we have a really good fight. Peter Yan and Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo. And... I'm a big fan of both, and to be blunt with you guys, I think Peter Yan, uh, Peter Yan is going to win. Um, so one of the reasons I think that is I think, although I know Jose Aldo is good at everything, um, you know, I think that Peter Yan is extremely strong and physical for the 135 weight class. When I watched him in the Uriah Faber fight, literally each round I kept thinking to myself, he's figuring it out. He's learning He's learning as he's going. If you watch that Uriah Faber Peter Yan fight and compare round one to round three or anything after that, it's completely different. You can tell each round in his mind, he's thinking, okay, I have this. And the confidence I had in him winning continued to go up as I watched that fight. So I think, uh, again, I think that's going to be either a ref stoppage, uh, you know, a TKO. And I think it's going to be in round four or round five. And um, yeah, I think Peter Jan's going to win. I definitely do. Um, so then we have the rematch. Uh, Alexander Volonovsky and Max Holloway. The first fight was really good. You could tell that uh, Alexander kept getting on the inside, using those kicks a lot. Obviously using a lot of his power. Um, he's a, I wouldn't say really short dude. I'm pretty short too. I'm five foot seven, but he's a short dude and... You know, he's real, real strong. He has a lot of power. So he's going to try to get inside. And he knows that Max Holloway is going to try to utilize that reach. So he knows Max is going to try to stay back, keep that distance, use his hands. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's working not just on combinations to get on the inside, but he's really working on his footwork and the way that he actually approaches getting inside. Um, and so this fight is actually, I think, one of the more interesting ones because of the fact that their styles are so different. They've already fought before. They know the attributes that each other has. I think it's going to be really cool there. But I think it's going to go to the same way that the first fight did. And I think that Alexander's going to win. And I actually think that, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a decision. Unanimous. Um, and I think he's going to win. And then for the main event, we have Kamara Usman and Jorge Masvidal. Very excited for this fight. These guys do not like each other, which makes it even more interesting. Um, so with that, I would say some of the attributes Jorge Masvidal have, has. He's not as powerful as Kamar Usman, but he can be, depending on what he hits you with. He's very quick on his toes, and he's very precise. He's extremely good with counter-striking. 
I think the problem he's going to have is someone like Kamara Usman, you, like, you need so much power to actually put him down. Like, you literally need to smack him in the head with a cinder block. I know that sounds crazy, but, I mean, there are certain fighters that, like, I mean, I'm watching these fights, like, thinking, dude, just stop. I know you want to win the fight, and I know you probably make $100,000 more if you win the fight, but it's like, for your own safety, you should stop. But the thing is, that's the reason these people are in that position is because they just have that mindset that's just like, oh, you broke my jaw? Well, I'm still here. So I think that round one, two, and three, Jorge Masvidal is going to kind of, you know, get him good, get him good as Kamar Usman's warming up. Kamar's not a bad striker. People like to lean on this, you know, this scenario that like because of his wrestling background that, you know, that's all he does. And if you watch the Kamar Usman, Colby Covington fight, you'll know for sure he can stand there and trade. And he hits hard, you know. So I think um, he's going to be kind of slowly warming up as Jorge Masvidal is kind of slowly getting exhausted. I think round three is when the tides will change. And I think we're going to see this change of attitude with Jorge Masvidal where he he's not going to be disrespectful, but I think that he's going to be in the cage thinking like, oh man, like, yeah, fuck, you know, here we are. And I think he's going to respectfully kind of get, uh, kind of get beat there towards the end. I just, um, I don't think, to be quite frank with you, I don't think Jorge Masvidal has the same, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, grit about him that Kamara Usman does. Uh, when people talk about the saying, kind of like walking into the trenches, right? Like now you're in the trenches, you either have to get out of the trenches or keep going. Kamara Usman is one of like the three people that I'll say that like, I can't even imagine him getting out of the trenches. He seems like someone who personally loves to be fucking, uh, you know, in those fourth and fifth rounds. Like he thrives off that. But I will say one of the most interesting things about this whole card to me is... Does Jorge Masvidal catch him while Kamara is not warmed up yet and Jorge still has enough of that, you know, reserved, explosive, preci precise energy? Uh, because at the end of the day, it only takes one shot to knock someone's light lights out. And when you have someone like Jorge Masvidal that can do it so quickly, that's why I think I'm so excited for this fight. So uh, I am about to... Uh, kind of get my day going, and I'm excited for the fights later. I'll post a video to see how the results are. I could be completely wrong. I could be right. I could be both. We'll find out. Uh, but I want to say thank you guys for checking this out. I have no idea how how this is going to go. I could continue to make these videos, but um, we'll see. And so thanks to everyone who checked this out. Make sure you check um, the video I make after the fight. Have a good one.